Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode of the Real Salt Lake Show on the KSL Sports Network. You can't see it, but Josh is flexing. Dude, when's the last time you actually pumped iron, though? This morning. Oh, tch. dang, dude. Yeah. And last night. Wow. Oh, doubles. Yeah. Yes, sir. Trying Deadlifts to get healthy? And squats. Mm. You know, it's not that I never don't go to the gym. I just like food that's horrible for you, right? Yeah. So it's, I work out to not become like the biggest version of myself possible, you know? Yeah. One, one day I'll shape up. Which is hard. It's hard to avoid becoming the biggest version of yourself possible when your metabolism is like gone. Like Yeah, dude. I you know? honestly, I just need to learn how to cook. I don't know how to like cook chicken well and stuff like that. So it's, oh, so I struggle with YouTube, bro. YouTube. Yeah. Can, it, it's also it, me following directions. That's the other hard part. Yeah. yeah. You're so mm-hmm. used to just saying what you want and then they give it to you through a window. Exactly. Or like <laughs> it arrives at your doorstep, you know, oh, it's the worst <laughs> dude. I hate door dashing bro so much. Cause oh. you spend like $24 and the food's always cold. Yeah. I've never, I'm, I've never gotten hot food. I'm very anti DoorDash for a lot of things, but we use it for work a lot. Like when my company buys lunch. So that's pretty much the only time I use it. That's nice, dude. Yeah. Well, speaking of DoorDash, uh, we're going to dash on to uh, the next door news. That was stupid. Um, the latest Real Salt Lake news, Mr. Justin Glad, the sixth homegrown player uh, to let's see. Well, he's actually the first to become a captain as a homegrown player. If you didn't know that, that's a fun fact. Uh, today was announced at, uh, I think 10, a, was it 10 a.m.? Yep. Yeah, 10 a.m. Uh, the RSL club sent out a formal letter uh, announcing that his extension contract or his contract extension is good through the year of 2027, dude. So four more years of Jay Glad, I guess, when it comes down to it. Yeah. Does that so that includes the 2027 season, right? I think so. <laughs> okay. I believe it does. Yeah. It was like the, the two years he has left plus two. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. That's how I understood it anyway. Or five. I'm probably six, wrong, but seven. So before we get into that and we unleash our thoughts on that, which you know, there's so there there's so many opinions and so many things to be said about feelings on Justin Glad. You know, sometimes he gets in his head. Sometimes uh, we feel like there's ball watching. When I say we, I'm, I think I'm talking about the fan base. Uh, but he did redeem himself in the last match, which we'll cover here in just a few moments. But let's uh, hear what Justin Glad had to say in his quote unquote release. He wrote. While it's hard to believe I've been in Utah for 10 years, there is still so, so much more to accomplish. It's been a dream come true to rise through the ranks of RSL from the academy to where I am now. It's been an absolute pleasure learning from all the RSL legends and making lifelong friends here with this club. But we are here to win trophies, and that's the ultimate goal. We've had some deep runs the last few years, And I'm expecting another deep MLS run this year. I believe in this club. I believe in this group. Our locker room culture under Pablo and his staff is outstanding. And we are firmly focused on hosting playoff games at home before our amazing fans, not just this year, but for many years to come. End quote. Thoughts on the quote, Josh? Yeah, it's a very PR answer. You know, it's it's on par. It's it's what you expect. You like it? Yeah. I mean, there's nothing there that really like jumps out to me that that makes me think it's an original thought, if that makes sense. But it's fine. It's fine. It's what you expect. I feel like there's probably like 10 templates that, you know, (laughs) people use and they just fill in a couple different words. So it sounds a little different. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's what you would expect, right? Every player is here to win trophies. Every player loves where they're at. Yada, yada, yada. It's fine. Locker room's amazing. Yeah, that... Okay, so that part stands out a little bit just from, like, the rumors we've we've heard lately. Mm. Um, 
You wonder you if at, that's him saying it or if he's been asked to say that, right? But Yeah. Are you at liberty to disclose or share any of the quote unquote rumors? Or do you feel uh, like we people- talked about him on the last episode that, you know, the rumor has it that the the players are unsettled under Pablo yada yada yada. Mm. Hence the bad form. I don't know how valid they are. Um, I've heard from different people within the organization that they're either a on point or B bullshit. So who knows? <laughs> Got it. To answer your question, by the way, it is a guaranteed contract through 2026 uh, with a club option for 2027. So man. can you yeah. believe he's been here as long as he's been here? Yeah, man. I remember when he had that, uh, like the, the part, like the hard shave all the way to the part. And he had his longer hair and he was just really skinny. And, you know, it, uh, it feels like he's, I don't know, maybe just because time has been flying by for so long. It feels like he's always just been kind of developing. But if you had to put a year on it, because he's been here for 10 years, that's a decade, dude. That's crazy. If you had to put a year on when he kind of achieved that, I would say veteran status, where would you put it? Um, I, I feel like the year he finally came into his own and kind of put his own stamp on everything, right? I'd probably say last year was his best year. It's when he started scoring goals, um, got the captain's armband this year. Uh, but yeah, I, I think last year into this year are kind of his peaks, right? This is where we're seeing prime Justin Glad. I know you can still get better like as a veteran, but yeah, I think the last two years are probably a good indicator of what we're going to get from here on out, which isn't bad. Like if you take out the last couple weeks of, of struggle, it, it's not just Justin, it's everyone, right? So I think having a homegrown center back kind of be with you his whole career isn't necessarily a bad thing as long as he doesn't, you know, completely fall off. Yeah. Yeah, it's weird. It's it, it's weird, isn't it? Because you're saying from this season to prior season, I, I, th- I would even maybe go back to when he tucked that penalty away to advance Real Salt Lake past the Sounders. I yeah, think that's, that's a good spot too. It's probably where he really cemented it, right? Uh, yeah, that's a big moment. Stepped up and booted it and uh, was a really good result on the road, especially against Sounders. Um, but it's weird because I feel like, although there's been some really good moments, there's also been, uh, at least in the last stretch of matches, it's been uh, some questionable from Justin Glad as far as positioning, marking, or lack thereof that are leading mm-hmm. to simple goals. And, you know, I guess we can start and kind of roll into that. Uh, Vancouver Whitecaps. Uh, the first goal was from a corner to Brian White, who rised up. And got a header. And when I was looking at the replay, because in the moment you do see Justin Glad kind of fling his arms up and he looks like he's standing there for a moment. And naturally, because that's he, he's been that focal point or that center point, <laughs> it's bad though. Like it's, you know, opposing team gets a goal and immediately you're kind of like, all right, where's Justin on this one? Right. Right. Yep. Um, I don't want to have to do that, but he sticks out so much in the real-time play and then in the replay. But then you notice that um, there was another uh, another player who ran in front of Justin, and that would that would have been lawful sins uh, place to jump up and at least try to head that ball away. So that goal didn't necessarily sit on Glad, but I don't know, man. I feel like we're in this weird funk where we're having to look now at our defense as well and just kind of determine what are we doing there? Because I, the conversation's just been, we, I don't know. We, we thought we didn't know if glad was going to be with us or not. And, and today we got our answer obviously, right. but when you look at the, the back line and the other players that we have, um, it is tough to have any confidence in, in the back line of Real Salt Lake, especially with, with like I said, love the last, um, the last few match results. Yeah, I think I think the the next off season, the focus really needs to be the back line, right? I think we need 
if we can, right, I don't know how realistic it is, but a DP center back would be incredible, right? So we have DPs up and down the whole spine. Mm-hmm. Um, to go along with Vera and Justin, and maybe even another, a, a Tam or a Gam, or a more expensive guy. And then I think we really need to invest in some outside backs, right? This is no knock against Brody. It's slightly knock against Oviedo, but only because I feel like he's lost a step, but he's still a solid player. Um, and and as good as Anelli's been, you can't rely on your first year rookie to be your best outside back. Like that's that's ridiculous, right? So I, I really do think the back line needs the revamp next. We we've revamped our midfield. They're they're gelling now. We're seeing it. We've revamped our attack. Now we need to do the back line badly. So badly. But this signals that Justin Glad will be a part of that, and I'm honestly okay with it. Yep, which leads me to my next question is on a report card, A to F, right? Uh, where where would you rate this on, you know, Real Salt Lake staff, front office, whatever, uh, in retaining Justin Glad? Like what kind of move, or I guess what kind of rating would you give this or grade on retaining Justin Glad, who's been with the club for at least a decade? Um, because I don't know the money detail, right? We'll go B. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm glad, not to be <laughs> put in there, but <laughs> it, it's nice that it was done before maybe a contract was expired or things like that. So, you know, it, it's really nice that they went ahead and got this done before we had a Herrera, not a Herrera situation, but like Albert or, you know, someone out of contract and trying to resign him and all that nasty nastiness. So yeah, I'll give him a B just for the simple fact that they just went and got it done. Yeah. I think it's a good sign. Like you said, Justin willing to extend, uh, no locker room drama, at least from that front, right? Like it's not being handled in a, in a moose way, which by the way, we've heard or we saw, uh, good things from the whole moose situation. But um, I would say this, Justin Glad, 10 years in the league, Real Salt Lake, uh, probably the only team that has really supported him in his, in his upbringing. I, I don't know, man. Have we ever, were there any whispers in the past about any MLS clubs that were interested in maybe snagging Glad in some way? Was there, can you think of a time where a club like Sounders or dynamo or even like an east coast team was remotely interested in glad no, nothing more than whispers right i don't think there was ever really any solid like oh my goodness we could lose justin glad next window i think he's always been a salt lake guy and i think he's gonna stay a salt lake guy which yeah. you know we all love it i think you know there, there's some negative connotation right now people aren't very happy with it um but i think that's because of the time right the club's not doing well so I think that's kind of writing on that. Let's be real. If if we didn't resign Justin Glad, y'all will be very pissed. Admit it. Admit it. Yeah. Yeah. How can you let our homegrown go? How can you let Justin go? He's been here so long. You'd be pissed. Yeah, unless there was like a huge just overhaul, you know. Yeah, and we um, let everyone go, you know. Yeah. Which uh is not that's not uh Unless you're Deloy Hansen and the Andy dude, the other guy. What was his name? Andy Carroll. Yeah. Uh, I, could still see, I could still see a fairly sizable overhaul this offseason. A little good mix-up. A little good yeah, switch-up. I could see see some shake-ups. Yeah, but what a what a beautiful position to be in, man, as a, as a player, as a futbolero like Justin Glad. You know, 10 years, that's a long time, dude. Salt Lake City, bro. You're settled here. All your friends are here. You know, Think of all the stuff he's seen with the club. I mean, he's seen the highest of, of highs in some cases to the lowest of absolute lows for this club. So, yeah, that's a good – it's a good veteran to have in the locker room, even if he's not starting in the future. It's He knows what's up. Is it fair to call someone that's been in the league 10 years a veteran? Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. How many years do you think it has to be until you're a quote unquote veteran? <laughs> right? You're a rookie, yeah. then you're a sophomore, then what? Junior, senior, senior year, you're a veteran, four years? Or I is would it five it, where you have to graduate? I'd put it at like six, but I would also like to, uh, I guess you can't really tie a, like silverware into that. 
No, like it's it's just about time served, right? Like, yeah, time I mean, served. <laughs> he's basically got a doctorate in RSL at this point. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, a lot of you know, I, I think uh, I'll have to agree with you. Um, when more further details come out on the, uh, you know, contract and the extension, you know, the only thing that we really have to look forward to in twenty twenty seven is. Let's say Real Salt Lake doesn't pick up his option to extend. How how is that? You know, what would that goodbye look like? Is it going to be, you know, is it going to be like bad blood and he goes to a different club that picks him up and we kind of goes to the Rapids, you know, pretend like he never existed. So, so hopefully we've learned our lessons there. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with that, man. Yeah, we got to retain something. We can't. It's hard, man. It's you, you want to naturally, you just want to kind of scrap everything. But uh, I think your your best card right now in your defense, it's glad unless you Absolutely. unless you don't agree with that. Right. Even even with him struggling, he he needs to be there. Yeah. And luckily he snagged a goal. And I'm hoping that that kind of picks up his confidence a bit because he's been very open about, you know, his his confidence being shot. Etc. So, I mean, it, at least he's open and knows, right? It's not yeah. one of these. He's just out there and no one knows what's going on. So, yeah, good on you, Glad. I'm glad you're uh, sticking around. Yeah. So, a really cool stat that uh, popped up here is uh, I'll just read this. This is just straight from Real Salt Lake's website. So, this season, Glad has scored a career high five goals, matching Austin FC defender John Gallagher. For the most goals scored by a defender across the entire league, which also, uh, which also leading, I'm sorry, while also leading all center backs. Uh, most recently, Glad scored the game winning goal in a 2 1 win over Vancouver Whitecaps. So, pretty cool, cool accolade, dude. Career high five goals uh, for the most goals scored by a defender across the entire league. Yeah. And he did say at the beginning of the year he was going for what, five goals? So, I think he hit that mark. I want to say the number was six. Oh, he got one more. But I mean, the fact that he's gotten to five is incredible. It's huge, man. It's huge. And it, you know, that goes, that should give us a little bit of confidence. If we can figure out what's going on with how Pablo Ruiz and uh, make all the pieces in front work, then uh, the goal should come from there. But also to have a defender like Justin Glad scoring goals. um, Well, let's, let's not forgive Brian Vera, right? He scored the other goal in that Vancouver game. So, Two defenders scoring goals to help your offense. That's an incredible thing. And that was from distance, bro. That's twice. That's from, I know. I was gonna I had, got a the leg, goal. I had seen the goal and I'm like, wait, did I am I just did he score another one? Just like off a set piece, low, takes a bounce, past the keeper, near post. Uh forty seventh minute. If you guys want to go back and you know, check out those highlights. Brian Vera, bro. That's, Let's talk about him weapon. for a minute, dude. Should he be uh leading like the the lessons and free kicks because it seems to be working. Yeah, I mean, I feel like uh, Sava and Luna could take a lesson from from Vera right now. Yeah. Oh man. Now, not to mention the couple he's almost had, right? Right. Yeah. I would. I would rather see Vera and Ruiz taking free kicks than anyone else at this point. <laughs> yeah, dude. Uh, no, it's just incredible stuff, man. Um, yeah, but you know, against a Vancouver Whitecaps. Two goals, hot. two goals from defenders, right? Almost uh, gave away a PK, I, I believe, and it was like near near stoppage time, which uh, it was didn't fly. at the end of stoppage time. It was like the last play of the game. Like gotcha. I'm pretty sure the whistle had blown for the game, and then they stopped and and looked at it again. And I think uh, on the clock, like it was like nine minutes added, and I think they played to like one oh three. Yeah, it was so, it was uh, tense moments. Yeah, so a lot of uh, I don't know. It's it still feels uncertain uh it feels like yeah the win is welcomed we we want to win games or at least have a turnaround but uh my confidence in this club right now is just you know uh at like six out of ten scale right yeah now. with with four games remaining i'm i'm looking at maybe one of them as a win not gonna lie to you so that kind of brings us up over to the next topic uh, which, by the way, if you guys went out to the to the match to watch Vancouver play, 
uh, on the 23rd. Good on you. Um, it seemed like the stadium, at least for the beginning, was a little, uh, in Spanish, we say vacío, a little empty. Let's move over to Los Angeles FC. If you guys watched the Campeones Cup, which takes the winners of their leagues, and I believe it's, I think it's formatted. Is it four clubs, two matches? I don't know. That, that's one I don't really care about. Cause, right. Yeah. That's, if you watch them play Tigres, who is a phenomenal team, bro, they really took it to Tigres. Like, it was uh, a great game. Dude, uh, Bowanga had a beautiful goal that unfortunately got called back, bro, but he was, like, making defenders dance. And mm-hmm. uh, they took it all the way to penalties, uh, that match was decided by penalties, and uh, Tigres won. So if you go and watch the highlights or if you tuned in for that match and you can see LAFC is, is next on the schedule, <laughs> I think we we got to be a little worried, man. Yeah, my confidence is about 0%, especially with them bouncing back from a loss again. It's going to be probably a rough go for us. But hey, maybe this is that one time we get, you know, a result down in LA. Who knows? I don't know. I don't doubt it. No. Hopes aren't high. They're not high. It's going to be a stomping. I have a feeling. <laughs> uh, and again, like I always say, I really hope I'm wrong, but history doesn't, uh, doesn't bode well for us. So we'll, yeah. we'll just chalk it up to, to minus three points here. A record just against LA period is is not good. But hey, it's, you never know. We could we could pull it out. You never know. More news unrelated to Real Salt Lake. We'll come back to RSL here in just a moment, dude. We'll we'll really try to dive into the LAFC preview somewhat. We have a. Uh, did you tune into the Open Cup? No, Messi wasn't playing, so I didn't care. Are you happy for Corey Baird to finally no. win silverware? Absolutely not. Like that could have been RSL. Like I'm still salty about it. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that, please. Cause you had some thoughts, dude. We were, I remember when you text me and you said, Hey, no Messi for open cup could have been real salt Lake could have been at, at home at and home. we could have had a chance in winning uh, a title. So yeah. tell me your thoughts, dude. No, I mean, obviously it's disappointing for people that spent the money to go to the game to not see Messi play. Right. But, you know, that was our quickest way back to Champions League. That was our quickest way back to some real real international competition. That was a prime opportunity to be in a final, right? We just had to beat Houston, which to Houston's credit, they've been on a tear. But we we really fumbled it, man. We really fumbled it. And then you're letting Corey Baird lift up silverware, which is just annoying. <laughs> so I don't know. It's 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 greatly disappointing. Um, I'm, I'm kind of glad we didn't have to deal with people spending hundreds of dollars on tickets here in Salt Lake city and, you know, supporters Uh not being able to get in just for messy, not to play. Right. That would have been frustrating, but man, what an opportunity to, to draw Miami and then not have to deal with messy. Like that's a gift. It's a gift. Yeah. That would have been nice, man. Um, we had plenty of thoughts kind of like leading up to that and, our run of form was really, really good. And then there was just we questionable, fire. questionable starts. And I don't know if we just started to prioritize other things on top of that, but we should have doubled down. And it is a crazy thought to think that we could have had a soft inter Miami, like just, just inter Miami with messy beast, right? Just taking down big yep. clubs, bro. Uh, spanked Mexican clubs won the league's cup without a doubt with Messi. They're top three in the league teams, not on the, not in the standings clearly, but they're like with Messi, bro. Come on. They're right. top they're, three. They're, teams. they're ridiculous. Even, you know, and Messi came in like halfway through the season. So out of his control, but it, yeah, it's, it's just, um, it would have been, yeah, that's, you think about it. Real Salt Lake could have won that match, especially with how bad, uh, Inter Miami was playing. You know, you got Yosef Martinez up there, dude. Who 
he's a shell he, of his former self. Yeah, I mean, he is. He's not the threat that he used to be. I think that he would be a problem for Real Salt Lake, uh, honestly. But it it wouldn't be too big of a problem. Uh, it's hard to assess because Inter Miami is a talented team. But yeah, without Messi, man, it was just like a, it was a snooze fest, dude. It was like you were you were watching The Lion King without Simba. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yep. So yeah, ball dropped there. It could have been fun, but I did text you after the Open Cup, and I was like, "Dude, this is a little comical. Like how hard they're celebrating this." Um, oh, like James Harden there, like losing his mind. <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, admit it though, we RSL probably would have celebrated it pretty hard too. Yeah, and I, I get it. You know, it's a real competition. Teams enter. You're playing against top talent, but the League's Cup obviously is just way more impressive. Open Cup. To celebrate it that hard, it's like ch- chillax, bro. Just chill yeah. a little bit, relax. It's not that cool. Tone yeah. it down a little bit. You'd have, really have be, some uh, humility. You'd really be yeah. happy if Real Salt Lake won an Open Cup. I would be happy, um, but I not as happy as other cups, right? It's it's a cup that's cool. I'd be more happy for Champions League, right? Just to get in. But yeah, yeah, it is what it is. Should we get into uh, Sava? Go ahead, man. I'm going to just pull up some RSL show tweets here, see if we got some comments after the match. But uh, right. well, I, I, I want your thoughts. Be good. This is actually- I want your thoughts. So yeah. Saturday, Savarino is left out of the 18. And, and you guys all obviously know this, but he's not in the 18, and the team announces that it's for personal reasons. Seems kind of sketchy. Seems weird. Uh, after the game... Savarino gets on Twitter and replies to admin and simply asks, what personal reasons? <laughs> yeah. And then the following day posts a highlight reel and tags his agency. What, what do you, what do you read into that? What, what, what other message do you send aside that you don't want to be there? Yeah. And, and exactly right. He clearly doesn't want to be here anymore for me. But honestly, since he's been back, I've never felt like he's actually wanted to be back. He always seems kind of disconnected from the rest of the guys, uh, especially when Chicho got here. When Chicho got here, his body language on the field was poor. I don't know if it's jealousy because he wasn't the guy anymore. I don't know what's going on there, but it, it may be time and it may be forced by Sava for, for him to move on yet again. I mean, what was it list a couple months ago? He was in Italy getting a passport and there were rumors there too. So yeah, it it just doesn't seem like he wants to be here. He does give off the vibe that it's just, he's in it for himself. It's his best interests. Mm -hmm. And I think that if we, if we went as hard as we did on Musovsky for not uh, training with the team, well, then maybe we should call out Severino uh, in the, in a different perspective that, you know, he just he, he he just gives off the vibe that he's not a a team player, um, or that he's too good to be here. Too good to be here. Uh, probably thinks he's worth a lot more than what he is. I think he just needs a wake up call, man. Where no one picks him up. Like I don't think that would ever happen, just because there's such a selection out there. But you're on Real Salt Lake because that's the best you can do. If you were the type of player that you think you are. You'd be getting looks from LAFC. You'd be getting looks from like an Inter Miami. You'd be like that. Those would have been in the conversation uh, on your return to Major League Soccer. But truthfully, Real Salt Lake is the only club that looked at you because we've had you before. Don't get me wrong. I, I still think we're a better team. I saw on the field. Um, I do think he has a valuable. He he is valuable for us. I just think. Either he needs to figure out or we need to figure out how to make him feel more important, I guess. And I guess that's not our job, but I we got to figure out a way for him to want to be on the team, I guess. I don't know. And we could be way off base here. It feels Anymore. like he, it feels like he gets demotivated like fast. Yeah, easily, right? Easily. And, and I think him not being on the field this weekend was like a benching. Mm-hmm. So you're getting benched dude. And you're like a DP, you know what I mean? Like what's going on there that that shouldn't happen. I just feel like he, he loses that motivation. I mean, I'm sure as a, 
as an overall athlete and someone in the league who wants to play football and score goals and win titles, the motivation is there. But the minute that the stardom is maybe taken from you or you're not getting the ball enough or you're not converting goals, you get in your own head. And I just I, I feel like that's something that he struggles with. Like if you just had to assess it by his body language. Yeah. His body language is poor a lot of games, especially if, you know, he gets a bad ball or, you know, uh, he gets tackled kind of hard. Like he, he doesn't respond well, it seems. Yeah. So Whoa. I, I'm a little over it, dude. Like pack your bags, go. Bye. I mean, that's the same we're feeling with Moose, right? Like at this point, if you don't want to be here, I, I don't care. But Musovsky you know, redeemed himself a little bit because it seems like the conversation that Pablo had with him resonated and Musovsky just decided to kind of handle it, return to training and he's back in the system. You know, I, I hope it was that and, and it wasn't us caving and, and giving him a big fancy new deal that was worth way too much money. Right. Yeah. But at the same time, I feel like rewarding a player that's been holding out for four weeks with a start. I don't love that either. Yeah. Well, we've, so. we've seen the opposite. We've seen the opposite and it derailed, it derailed a whole career to absolutely now coaching GKs. So yeah. it's, it's, it's unfortunate with every player this has happened to and in any way you can spin it, it, it sucks. Yeah. So we tweeted a comeback, complete RSL scores twice in the second half to come back and get three points at home. Bar says no PK at the end. Final score 2-1. Let us know your thoughts on the game. So I'm just going to read a couple of these tweets here. Uh, Graydon Larson wrote, Zach McMath is my hero. I agree, dude. Zach McMath had a nice game. He had a good game. Good I'm game. still ready for a new goalkeeper, but he had a good game. Why are you ready? Are you just because of like the little mistakes he makes here and there? Um, I Too think frequently? It, let's be real. He He saved himself with one of those errors, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. okay, Dude, anyway. that was okay. Um, no, it's I, I think for the style RSL wants to play, we need someone that's good with his feet, right? We need the Ramondo type skill set at his feet, Ochoa, and, you know, and it, Zach doesn't have that, and that's okay. But for what we want to do, we need that. Uh, he's an excellent shot stopper. No one's questioning him there, but. We we just need a, a different type of goalkeeper, and honestly, I'm I'm legitimately worried about his brain, like the amount of hits to the head he's had this year. Insane, absolutely <laughs> insane. Yeah. Speaking of, uh, we already we already mentioned it. Justin got his header goal, and it looks like his nose went into the like the skull of the defender. Had a bloody yeah. nose, but hey, man, way to redeem yourself and get that fifth goal. And, uh, and, yourself and honestly, that that probably on the line. hopefully fixes his confidence. Yeah, I don't see why not. Ben Green said, solid comeback, but it wasn't that convincing of a win for me. Between the goal line clearance, questionable PK at the end, and a, and a lucky goal from Vera, uh, RSL could have easily lost. Hopefully this win is enough to jumpstart the team, and the Sava drama doesn't overshadow it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I'm just going to say, yep. No, it's true. Uh, Emphasis you know, on hopefully because we, we were lucky. We didn't lose that game. Let's be real. So yeah, just overall not impressed, man. I, I'm not uh, what it would take to shift me. And I think shift a lot of people is uh, get a road win versus a LAFC. dominant, dominant road win. Not I would a two one on a penalty kick. Right. I need, right. Open, open, like a uh, run of play goals, convincing defense, right? I don't need to see Boanga get a tap in. They got to be scoring worldies. What do you think? Uh, just we'll, we'll conclude with this. We'll have a full team too uh, once we get uh, back after the LAFC match. But let's, uh, let's do quick predictions because I know you like these. I already have mine. You want me to go first or you? Uh, I'll go 4-1 LAFC. That's where I'm at. 4-1. Glad we're on the same page. But again, as always, I hope I'm wrong. Yeah, we hope we're wrong. That'll uh, conclude it for the RSL show. Uh, We'll be back with more energy 
once we have something to celebrate and think is cool. Uh, remember, you guys can catch all our older episodes on the podcast app. Go check us out on YouTube. Uh, say what's up to us on Twitter on Match Day. We're always active there. We're always tweeting the latest highlights. And uh, give us some love on IG. We're there as well, too. Uh, we'll be back with Alex Napolis and junior producer uh, this coming week. Take care of yourselves. Tune into the match. And as always, uh, hit us up during the matches with your thoughts, comments, concerns, and we'll always read them on the next episode of the RSL Show.